In this example, we're given a pair of impulses in the frequency domain, one at omega naught and one at negative omega naught. So we have a pair of impulses in the frequency domain, and the question is, what is the time domain equivalent? So what is the inverse Fourier transform? So I'm going to use the pair of impulses as an example to carry out the inverse Fourier transform. So to find the inverse Fourier transform, we use the inverse Fourier transform integral, where we simply take our signal, f of omega, which is given in the question, we multiply it by this complex exponential, and we integrate it over all frequency. So I'll write that out. f of t equals, there's a scaling factor of 1 over 2 pi, I'm going to integrate from minus infinity to infinity. And I'm going to replace f of omega with the expression that we're given. So it's pi times an impulse at omega minus omega naught plus pi an impulse omega plus omega naught e to the j omega t d omega. Remember, I'm integrating over frequency, not over time, so that's important. So, now we have, let's just put some brackets around this, it becomes less confusing. So now we have two impulses multiplied by a complex exponential. How do we integrate that? Remember the sifting property? or the sampling property of the delta track function. So that allows us to take the value of omega for which the delta Dirac function is not zero and replace that instead of omega in the complex exponential. So I can rewrite this as two integrals. So that's why I left the space. I can now, oops, I can put my complex exponential here, j omega t d omega, and I can add an additional integral, 1 over 2 pi minus infinity to infinity. And now, using the sifting property, I can replace the value of omega there with minus omega naught and omega naught. So my time domain function now simplifies to 1 over 2 pi multiplied by e to the j omega naught t. That's that. Plus e to the minus j omega naught t. That's that. And if you look carefully, when you have two complex exponentials added together, that simplifies to cosine. Remember the Euler definition of cosine? And what I forgot to do was to, to cancel the pi. So that gives us the textbook definition of cosine omega naught t. So what we've just shown is that in the time domain, cosine omega naught t corresponds to a pair of impulses in the frequency domain. Another way of saying that is the inverse Fourier transform, the inverse Fourier transform 
of a pair of impulses, symmetric about the y-axis, so a pair of impulses at omega naught and minus omega naught, corresponds in the time domain to cosine omega naught t. And that is our final answer.